Then, sir, we will start the session. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on importance of mathematics. My name is Ravadi, and I'm a part of team here at Tiru2. Here we have our speaker, Mr. B H V S S S Basugaru, and Ms. Priyanka from Student Counselor Department. This webinar is an outreach program by Tiru2 for students to help in developing their learning skills and for parents who are willing to give their children best education. And let me offer a quick intro about Curito. Curito is an innovative learning platform in a vision to provide quality education to every student by well-experienced faculty. I know Turito is available in USA, Canada, Middle East, India, Singapore, and Australia regions. Programs offered by Turito are Mapline OC and for academics, one-on-one -on -one tutoring services for math, science, English subjects in Australia regions. I know uh, how Turito is different from other edtech platforms which are currently existing because Turito offers interactive learning methods to students as per the requirements. Regular assessments to track their child's progress. Also, Turito provides parent app access to make you a part of children's learning journey. We have top two percent certified educators who we partner with to envision our mission. And before we start the today's topic, let me offer a quick intro about our speaker. Mr. B H V S S Vasu is an holder of Master's in Mathematics and Bachelor of Education with an experience of 30 years in teaching field, more than 80 plus qualified IITMs and 4,000 SAT and ACT students for the examination. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Yeah. Give me control. Yes, sir. I have given the access. Are you able to do it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah warm welcome to everyone. My name is Vasu. Here uh, I am going to teach you about the importance of mathematics. The mathematics is a powerful tool for global understanding and communication that organize our lives and prevent chaos. Mathematics helps us to understand the world and provides an effective way of building mental discipline. Mathematics encourages logical reasoning, critical thinking, creative thinking, abstract or uh, spatial thinking, problem solving ability, and even effective communication skills. The mathematics is a study of measurements, numbers, and space, which is one of the first sciences that humans work to develop because of its great importance and benefit. The origin of the word mathematics, it is a Greek word, which means tendencies to learn. And there are many branches of mathematics and science that are related to numbers, including geometric forms, algebra, and others. The mathematics plays a vital role in all aspects of life, whether in everyday matters, uh, such as time tracking, driving, cooking, jobs such as accounting, finance, banking, engineering, software. These functions require a strong mathematical background and science uh, experiments by scientists and mathematical techniques. There are a language to describe scientists' work and achievements. So first, to go with, in the slide, we have uh, basic concepts and uh, number systems here. The here, number systems. Now, one has to understand the number system, especially the natural number system, the whole number system, the integers, rational numbers, rational numbers, real numbers. And as the student goes into higher education, he will come across the biggest system that is a complex number system. Then what do you mean by an absolute value? What is an additive identity? What is a additive inverse? What are multiplicative identity, multiplicative inverse? What are even and prime numbers? 
and at least you must know all the primes which are less than 100, the what are composite numbers, then the number system is understood. And even zero, when zero is understood by a student, so zero, whether it is positive or negative, zero is neither positive nor negative. Zero is a neutral number. And even some misconceptions are there, whether zero is even or odd, or neither even or odd. So zero is even, because every integer multiplied by two is an even integer. So zero into two is an even integer. And then as you move into the grades, you will be having algebra. In algebra, he has to understand the variable concept, the coefficient, what is the coefficient to the variable, what are constants, what are expressions, what are equations, and what are the properties of addition and multiplication. Now then, when in lower grade, either in fourth grade or in the fifth grade, when plus into plus is a plus or minus into plus is minus, or plus into minus is minus and minus into minus is plus is introduced. We never dare to ask the teacher or the, sometimes the teacher may not explain this, but on the number line, we can understand that what is plus into plus, why it is a plus, why minus into minus is plus, all these things we can understand. So here, uh, one has to understand the concept. Now dividing as he goes into upper grades, he will know about uh, whether uh, zero can be divided to any number. So what is the result we are going to get from that? All these things he has to understand. Then coming to speed drills to solve calculations, fast calculations. The fast calculations right from lower grades, the student knows, for example, to two what you add to get 10 or for 37 what to add so that you get 100. So mental calculations, plays very important role in our life. So mental calculations that the student is able to do, that is you must have some speed drills in addition, subtraction, multiplication, division in lower grades so that the student will be fast enough to solve problems. For example, 25 into 17 is there. So 25 into four is 100. 25 into 16 is 400. So 25 into 17 is 425, very easy to understand. So 25 into four is 100. I repeat once again, 25 into 16 is 400 because four into four and 25 into 17 easily can say 425. So like that, if the subject is given to the student how to round up the numbers, how to do calculations, fast calculations are very much needed for the student. And then we have some correlations between uh, some of the concepts which are very important for even the exams the MCQs or whatever exam, NAPLAN and everything, fractions, decimals, percentages. In lower grades, fractions, decimals, and percentages are introduced. For example, if you have 10%, now you can understand it as a fraction as one by 10. In the decimal form, you can understand it as 0 0.1, 20%. 20% 20 as a decimal, it is 0 0.2, it is one fifth. So all these things, fractions, decimals, percentages, if he knows the correlation, now not only in the smaller grades, in higher grades when you come, in functions chapter, how calculus can be utilized in functions so that what is a strictly increasing function? What is a strictly decreasing function? So in higher grades, you can again correlate between subjects to get answers very easily. So that mapping must be done. Next, we have uh, the need for uh, skills for short uh, tips or shortcuts, which you can say in some concepts. For example, direct variation is there. Now, direct variation means if 100 uh, calories uh, has 60 fat, then what will have 120 calories? This is a direct or indirect proportion, whatever it may be. Simple equations, whether these equations are having infinite number of solutions or no solution, or it is having a single solution, by seeing the problem, one has to understand. As he moves into upper grade, for example, quadratic equations are there. So quadratic equation, you must be able to split because quadratic equation represents a parabola. So he must know how to split it. If he is fast in splitting it, mentally he can calculate and give the answer for the problem. So this is what it is needed. Why these skills and uh, the, these uh, shortcuts are needed for then moving on to uh, tricks to ace uh, competitive exams. Now, generally in competitive exams, when MCQs are there, now see in MCQs, actually four options will be there or five options will be there. 
eliminating the options, how to eliminate the options, which option is correct. So if you can analyze the problem, reading the problem, understanding the problem, if only one option is satisfying, then that would be the answer. Or if he has, uh, then he will have the ability to uh, finish off some problems within uh, uh, some span of time where it is less, then he can go with other problems where there is an application mode, he can put a lot of mind into that and he can solve very easily. That actually motivates the students, it gives confidence to the student so that he can solve more problems. And uh, here, you know, for example, uh, there is a problem wherein uh, the answer is nothing but it is point something. Means the numerator uh, is uh, less than the denominator. Only one option is satisfying, then you can go with one option. So eliminating options and answering, especially in NAPLAN, you have object to type. When you have object to type, you can go with the, these type of skills where the, you can get the answer very easily. So competitor exams, it is very much important for all this. Then understanding the word problems. Now data related problems will be given. Now data related means especially these problems may be for uh, probability or uh, statistics or algebra or geometry. Now in geometry, you have various concepts, perimeter, you have area, you have for rectangle, square, parallelogram, trapezoid, rhombus, sphere, circle, everything. So for everything, you must know the formulas and you must read the problem understand the problem, what is given in the problem, what are the constraints given in the problem, then what is the question. According to the question, he has to move. So you must have a bird's view of the problem, whatever it is given to you. Read it carefully, and then you can answer word problems also. Now, as we move ahead, here analyzing graphs is very important. Graphs, actually from graph, if the student knows graph, then he can answer many things. Now in some, in some of the regions, a 10th grade student knows 3000 graphs. So 3000 graphs means it must be, it can be linear graphs, it can be quadratic graphs, it can be trigonometry, it can be inverse trigonometry, it can be exponential, it can be logarithmic graphs. So many graphs are there where if you can digest the problem within graphs, then you can answer very easily from the graphs. Because for example, if you take a linear graph, now in linear graph is a straight line graph. So as he sees the straight line graph, what is the slope of the graph? Is it an increasing graph or is it a decreasing graph? So the data, whatever it is given, whatever the questions are asked, seeing the graph, you can directly come to the answer, come to the solution of the problem. Then we have uh, why, how mathematics can be, teaching can be made interesting. Now you can go with the real life word examples. Now these are very important for the student to have real life word examples. For example, uh, you're teaching distributive property. A times B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. Now, when you introduce the concept, introduce with a real life example. For example, you're, you're telling the student that uh, you have a class consisting of 10 boys and five girls. You want to distribute two chocolates to them. So two into 10 plus five will give you two into 10 is 20, 20 chocolates to boys and two into five is 10, 10 chocolates to girls. Total chocolates are 30. So this is how distribution, how multiplication is distributed over addition, real life word problems. For example, uh, you, are, you, are, you are telling about a variable X. As the variable X changes, the Y will change. So for that, you have a strategic plan. You can tell a real world exa example so that the concept can be understood very easily for the student. So these are the tools which we are going to use in Turito. So how the concept must be given to the student, how the practice must be done, how the concept must be analyzed. Concept is very important to have mathematics. This is the importance of mathematics. And even uh, when you see parallel lines definition in uh, lower grades, generally the teacher says the distance between uh, the two lines, if it is maintained the same, then they are nothing but the parallel lines. So as you move on with the grades, you can just say that the lines which intersect at infinity are nothing but parallel lines. In reality, they won't intersect. So they intersect at infinity. So this is the enlarged definition which you can think about. Even in parallel lines, when they are cut by a transversal, corresponding angles are equal, they will say. So as you move ahead, for example, if you come to ninth grade or 10th grade, 
there is a concept of slope where the angles of inclinations are same. So angles of inclinations are nothing but the corresponding angles. So the same subject, what you learn in lower grades, in higher grades, you learn it differently. For example, we have algebraic formulas, A plus B the whole square, A minus B the whole square. You can add them, you can subtract them, you get results. So when the sum is given, when the product is minimum, or when the product is given, when the sum will be maximum, like that, these questions can be analyzed on, basing on algebraic formulae. But the same questions can be analyzed in calculus when you go to higher grade as maximization and minimization topics. So same topic can be converted there. Apart from these equations, you may have different equations, but these problems can be analyzed in lower grade. They can be analyzed in higher grade. Now, for example, I'll tell you another example. There is a circle where a line is touching. Now, from the center of the circle to the line where the touches, it is the shortest distance. That's why it is a perpendicular. Now, for example, you have a seashore. You want to walk to the water and you want to touch. You will go perpendicularly. So this is how you must think and you must be able to analyze. So when the student starts thinking about a problem, he will understand many things. Now here, moving forward, now, how to solve a max word, word problem? Now, first, I, as I said earlier, now read the problem and think. What is given in the problem? Understand the constraints. Constraints are very important. Now, sometimes the constraints will be given. X lies between 0 to 5 or Y lies between 0 to 2. Something will be given. So understand the constraints which are applicable to the problem. So what is given in the problem? And from max word problem, you must be able to write the equation also. So when you can write the equation, translate the words into an equation, that is the next step. And you can start solving the problem. For example, there, is a, there are some horses and there are some hens, and you are given the total number of legs. And let us suppose the total number of legs are 88. And the uh, horses and the hens totally, they are 15. So you must be able to try to put the two equations because uh, if you go with the trial and error basis, you may take a lot of time. So then equations can be involved for the word problem. So how many horses are there? How many hens are there? So like that, you can put an equation and after putting the equation, start solving the problem. And in the easiest method, you must solve. See, there will be several methods for a problem. So several methods, if the student knows, that is very good but you must know the easy way of solving the problem also because for the competitive examinations and proceed to the complex parts. Now, where is the complex part? How do I solve the problem? Which is the easiest method? And check the result if you after coming. So for example, I told uh, horses and hens. After getting the answer, uh, see whether the, the sum of the horses and the hens is, is it 15 and the sum of the legs, is it 88 or not? So like that, you can check the answer. Wrap up and think how to use the solution in the real world. So, for example, some other problem you can think about apart from this problem or this problem, how it can be analyzed and put it into another example. Also, if you think that would be easy for you. This is all about max word problem, how to solve. Then tips to solve a math equation easily. So how, when you are given an equation, uh, I told you earlier, it can be an algebraic equation. It can be an exponential equation. Now, exponential equations, actually, the one which consists exponents, actually, in higher grades, they will be involved in uh, scientific notations. For example, the distance between uh, Earth and uh, Sun is there. So we can't give the largest number. So we give it in 10 power positive numbers. So the one which is very nearer to that number, which will be given. Or uh, if you have, for example, coronavirus is there, the radius of the bacteria, it is 80 nanometers to uh, 120 nanometers. A nanometer is 10 power minus nine meters. So here what happens is uh, the scientific notations actually give you the result. So in math equations, when you solve either whether it is exponential equation or logarithmic equations or trigonometric equations, one must know the concept. Identify the problem type, that's what, is it a linear equation type or is it a quadratic equation type, exponential, logarithmic, trigonometric? What is given? Visualize and review the equation. Now think about what the equation is given, how to understand the problem. Devise a plan to solve the problem. You must have a bird's view to solve the problem, how to go to the problem, how to actually end up with this problem, 
what, which direction I have to move with so that I can get the answer for this. And the, in lower classes where PEDMAS is used, for example, you are given two plus three into two divided by some five or something. So how PEDMAS is used uh, to actually get T is parenthesis, E is nothing but uh, yeah, M is multiplication, uh, division, addition, subtraction, all these operations, how you can use. Solve the question and get the answer. Go back and check the process, whether it is correct or wrong. Now, every time after getting the answer, checking is very important for a problem and then retain the concepts that will help in future. So whatever you are analyzing the concepts, if you can revise once again, then it will be nothing, but uh, you can solve many problems based on this if you can understand the concept. Now, why learn Max with Turito? Now here, see, as I told you earlier, uh, we are going with uh, real life work uh, examples which are given to the concepts because the concepts must be uh, actually imbibed by the student. When you know the concept only, you can solve many problems. Without knowing the pro concept somewhere, one problem, after doing even 10 or 20 problems, what 21st problem may be hard for you. So choose mindful over handful learning, gain concept clarity from the ground up, get insights from experts in the subject. So we are there to help you. So whatever doubts the student is getting, and it will be an active and interaction class with you. So every time the student and the teacher gets interacted very well, so that he will be helping out and the student will be doing the problem. Sir will be helping, the teacher will be helping uh, how to do the problem, how to understand the concepts in between questions are asked. It is an active learning process. So learn is personalized live interactive classes. All this, what you need uh, from Turito, it will be there and you can really do fun with mathematics. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for the detailed overview about the topic. I know all the participants, parents, students, who joined to the webinar, please feel free to write your queries on the topic at Q&A section. We shall be answering them now. Yes, sir, we got some questions from parents side. Um, the first question is how to improve child's calculation speed. Yeah. So, uh, for this question, the answer is uh, speed drills, as I told you. So continuously give the student uh, addition first. Before giving addition, how to round up and get the answer for numbers. For example, in, if it is a lower grade student, uh, to add to two what you must add so that you'll get 10. So eight, two plus eight, three plus seven. So not only 10, then go with 20 or 50 or 100. And then after that, give him some addition problems where the student does it. And then subtraction followed by multiplication. Multiplication speed drills must be done before because you have uh, the tables and everything. So the student has to digest a lot of tables. So for that, you need some uh, drills given to him. So you must have a practice, a daily give him uh, problems, including uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and then go with the division. Because if the student is very fast in doing multiplication, then only give division for it. After that, as I told you that, that there are some correlation between the concepts, for example, fraction, percentage, decimals. These are very, very important. Even in NAPLAN also, the student must be very fast. Their one sixth of what is what. So like that. So those calculations, if you can write from the lower grade, if the student gets it, then he will uh, easily do calculations very much fast. I think I'm clear with uh, what I told. Yeah, sir, and we got one more question. My child hates math. How to make him get interested in the subject? Yeah, uh, one thing is uh, you join Turito, we'll make it interested. Uh, apart from that, as a parent, uh, see, if he hates Max, Max actually, uh, uh, some hate max is only because sometimes it's only by the teacher because I'm uh, more than 30 years of experience in teaching. Sometimes if you see we today also we believe, we remember some teachers of our school who has really delivered the subject like anything to us. 
So if real wildlife examples are told to the student uh, concepts directly, if you tell the concept A plus B the whole square equal to this, that, that is. So the student may hate the subject. So you must be given the subject with, a, for example, uh, one, one pen is uh, $2, ask him. Uh, so for example, uh, if I go and purchase uh, two pens, what is the cost? Three pens, what is the cost? Okay, so you will understand this uh, daily life routine problem. And then you can ask him, uh, I have $10, you have $5. What is the ratio between us? What is the ratio? 10 is to 5. Oh, what is the simplified ratio? 2 is to 1. So like that, some real world life examples must be connected to the student. There will be a nexus. Then he likes, he, he start liking max because it, you, it must, the subject must be delivered with a lot of interest and care. Otherwise, uh, he, he can't understand max. So max to understand really examples must be put before the student before uh, teaching him directly. I think the same question is asked. Same. Yeah. Yes, sir. And the next one is, is there any essay? Sorry, is there any easy way to remember formulas? Uh, yeah. See, daily practice of the formulas must be there, sir. Uh, daily, uh, he has to practice. Uh, take a rough paper. Uh, write the formulas and then have a correction. Then uh, what are the mistakes we have done? For example, you're writing the area of a square. It is X square. By mistake, the student has written perimeter 4X. Then we must tell even the dimension. Perimeter is not uh, in square meters or anything. It is in meters. Square meters is area. So the dimension also you must understand. Revising the formulas without seeing and writing it, getting corrected, and then remember the mistakes, what we have done, so that again we have to write. And keep in mind that where we have done mistake, that must be eliminated. But then only we can have a rigor, rigorous practice must be there. Without seeing the student has to write the formula. And another interesting thing I want to tell you to you, uh, to the, even to the answer for the above things. There is one magazine called Quanta Magazine. So in Quanta Magazine is a free magazine. Quanta magazine, Q U A N T A, Quanta magazine. Now, this magazine has uh, all the discoveries and inventions or the day to day, whatever they are doing in max, biology, uh, sciences, they are putting it. Even the animals, they do addition, subtraction, close recognize zero. So, many interesting concepts are there. These you can read and tell to the student that these are the uh, addition is done by close, so zero is recognized by monkeys, close, everything. So, where max is there, so max is there everywhere. Animals, many animals, they recognize uh, the addition and the subtraction. For monkeys, they have given uh, two or three buns and they removed one. Then they did subtraction in their mind. So the uh, quanta magazine is a very good magazine. And you have in YouTube number five, N-U-M-B-E-R-P-H-I-L-E. It is an Australian uh, professor's. So interesting concepts are there. Joseph's problem. What is pi? All these discussions are there. Number five, N-U-M-B-E-R. P-H-I-L-E. So they are even brilliant.org is there. So many, many things are there uh, over net where we can help our student. Even I was telling about uh, why minus into minus is plus. Why plus into minus is minus. So the concepts must be understood. Say, for example, uh, let us suppose uh, we have a debit card. We swipe two times, it is not charged in a month, but more than two, time, uh, two times we uh, swipe the card, then $1 is uh, charged. Let us suppose in a month, I, I swiped six times, four times I did more. Four into minus one is minus four. So this is how, you see, directly telling four into minus one is minus four, it may not be understood by the student. So give a word problem like this, and the student really can understand even those problems and how the problems are connected. Our max problems are connected to economics, biology, um, everywhere. Every part of the subject must be understood. For example, a parabola is there. Parabola is a projectile. So all these things must be understood. So right from lower classes, uh, as uh, you have asked, formulas are very important. So one has to digest the formulas. So you have to have a rigorous practice on paper. So get it corrected. Again, he has to write the formulas until and unless he is not doing wrong. Even the tables also. Tables also, they must be a practice. For fast calculations, give them speed drills. These are available over net. Uh, some uh, uh, some assignment type or you on, on your own you can give 23 plus uh, dashes uh, why what is 100 so like that you can give many questions 
addition, subtraction, multiplication, so that it will be useful for the student. Yeah, any other question, Ravali? Yeah, sir. Any daily tips to make child improve math? Any daily tips to make a child improve max? Yeah, very good. Uh, if he is in lower grade, uh, you have to give fast calculations, uh, as I told earlier, plus, minus, all these things. And uh, daily tips means uh, to improvise in max. In what grade he is, accordingly, we have to proceed. For example, he is coming from fourth grade to fifth grade. Uh, do the student knows about fast calculations or not? So we can, if, if he learns ratio or percentages or geometry, if he is learning uh, live examples, where you, you, take a, you take a door and you open it uh, halfway through, then ask him what type of angle is formed, make it full, what type of angle is formed, take a window and open it completely so it will form an obtuse angle. So like that, some, some things, innovative things you can ask in, within your home only you can ask him. So ask him to calculate calculations. See, we have calculator to calculate. Give him, uh, for example, you you went to some store and you purchased something. Uh, there the calculator will does and he will give the answer. Uh, you strike off that answer and ask him to calculate mentally. Mental calculations will improvise the mind to think not only for max, for anything in this world. Mental calculations are very important. So give him that grocery store uh, bill and you delete the down part calculation, ask him to calculate. That is the easiest way of approaching max. And as he moves to higher education, uh, there must be an help. Uh, you can Google some concepts, but uh, you can uh, take help. Uh, for example, if you join Turito also, not that I'm there in Turito, I'm telling all these things, but if really the student needs some help as from the teacher's side, we can help him getting good marks, understanding the subject very well. Yes, yeah, and the next question, how to build strong foundation in math? Any tips or strategies? Yeah, as I told you, see, uh, the, my, my plan of approach in the slides actually, uh, what I moved is, uh, I, my target was that only. So in the first slide, if you see the concepts, first one has to understand the concepts. First, what is the number system you have? Natural number system, that's what I told. Then comes the whole number system. So first number system, every concept, Say, I have seen many students that zero is even, they don't know. So zero is positive or negative, they don't know. Writing minus zero is same as writing plus zero. So first the foundation, it is like a foundation for a building. So foundation concepts in the lower grades must be strong enough so that the stu student can move ahead. So again, he can't, when he comes to the upper grade, he, he, and again, we must not think about how this is calculated or what is uh, what do you mean by ratio? What do you mean by a fraction? What do you mean by a decimal? You can't tell all these things every So every time the build must be strong. So as you build strong from each grade to other grade, then the students will be uh, doing very well. Uh, tips and strategies, as I said, uh, uh, tips is one of uh, tips and strategies means one comes the interest in the subject. So if really the student is interested. Uh, give him uh, some more additional problems or additional work to do if he's interested. Uh, so give him more number of problems to solve that will help the student to practice more. And any new concept somewhere you got, ask him to write somewhere. So concepts, you can write all the form, you can maintain a formula book. So wherein uh, all the formulas you can write, whatever you're getting in that particular grade, you can write all the formulas in one book so that he can have a revision daily or uh, uh, may not be daily. At least he can revise those concepts once, all the formulas and whatever he is getting new concepts. So somewhere in a problem, he sees a new problem with a new constant. So he can add up that so that he can revise it. And the next is here. Please let us know some important topics in math. Uh, you can't delete any topic in math. The What happens is as the student goes to higher grades, lower grades, I can, lower grades, I can tell, say lower grades, uh, number system and everything after that, algebra is introduced like that. Say everything is interlinked. As you move on to the higher grade, everything is interlinked. As I told you, when the uh, student does calculus, then he can uh, do functions in a different way, some of the problems. So graphical approach are there. So a uh, coordinate geometry can be linked with a problem of uh, the uh, plane geometry. So plane geometry concepts are applied somewhere. 
So that's why you can't delete geometry or algebra or uh, mensuration or anything. You can't delete. Everything is interlinked. Except some of the arithmetic, it is may not be linked, but arithmetic is and arithmetic means like ratio proportions, uh, uh, the time and distance, all these things are needed. Somewhere it may be in a multiple question. So max, you can't delete any topic. Every topic is important as what I think. Yeah, yeah any other question? Yeah, sir. How to make them remember formulas and concepts for solving different questions? Yeah, first the concepts, whatever the formulas, as I told you, uh, you maintain a formula book, a small book, write all the formulas which is grading in the grades and then keep on revising it, writing it n number of times without seeing where he is going, doing mistake, that must be concentrated more. Not only in Max, in any other subject, when we write without seeing, we develop, we develop that we will have, we'll know where we are doing mistakes. Identify the mistakes and tell him that these are the mistakes you are doing. For example, A minus B, the whole square is there. A square minus 2AB plus B square. He is writing continuously plus 2AB. You can tell him there is a minus sign here for 2AB. Like that, some things you can remember where he is doing mistakes, identify the mistakes, and again, without saying you must write. There must be a continuous practice. So one is formula book, maintenance of formula book for the grades, which is doing whatever new concepts are there in measurement or uh, something, geometry, whatever new concepts are there. You now write about a square. What is a square? All the vertices are 90 degrees. All the sides are equal. How to get the diagonal? All these things we must, we must the student has to write. So formula book is very important. And uh, practicing on uh, paper, taking a paper, writing, uh, revising the formulas daily, practicing them without seeing, rectifying the mistakes. I think that this will be, have a, a strong buildup in max. Yeah, okay, sir. We got uh, one more question. How to make a child learn timetable? Is it timetable? I think timetable, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a very good question. Actually, I even I want to tell, I, I tell to the kids, I've to, told long back also, every year also I tell. There must be a timetable for the student. Timetable is not the, the one you, which you paste or paste somewhere and you don't uh, maintain it. Timetable, when you get up in the morning, as you get up in the morning, if you have time before the school, so what you have to read in the morning, that is important. Segregate the time, whether max has to be done, science has to be done, what subject must be done. So, uh, I think after the school hours, when he comes home, so after doing the homework, if he has time, Best is uh, in the nights, if he practices max, that would be good. In the morning hours, if it is anything science or any other subject, it will be very good. Because max is nothing but you have to solve problems and you have to remember something. In the evening hours, if he gets time, then he can do it. So the timetable must be maintained and you have to stick on to the timetable. Let us suppose if the student uh, can't sit for hours together, then start uh, ask the student to sit for uh, 30 minutes. You, you can uh, get up, go somewhere, walk a, walk some two, three minutes here and there, drink some water, again sit. As you drink water, oxygen will go to the mind. It will be again a fresh mind. Again, you can sit and practice. But see that he's, uh, by, while uh, going away from the study table, don't uh, go, go and watch TV or something. They or discuss something with someone. What happens is uh, that will get distraction, and the timetable will not be followed. Timetable is the one which must be followed correctly. Maximum in the beginning, if it is not followed, but see that it is followed regularly. So uh, see, as the student moves on to the grade, he, then the discipline will be there for the student. I have my timetable accordingly. I will. But for example, one day the timetable for some reasons uh, it was not maintained properly. Then what you can do is, uh, okay, that you can uh, segregate into the next day or the next week schedule. You can uh, prolong it for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and you can adjust and you can complete. But before the exams, you must have a different timetable. When exams are not there for the student, you must have another timetable. That would be great. Yeah, sure. And we got one more question. As an app plan is approaching in one month time, how your class can help them to perform well if they started now? Yeah, one thing is uh, the time is very less. As you said, it is correct. 
So we have to concentrate on student wherever he is weak on those particular chapters. If we can concentrate, that would be great because uh, teaching the concepts which he knows uh, that would not be great. So the teacher will first uh, understand where he is uh, lagging behind that topics. If we can uh, give to the student and the other topics only a past division is made. I think in one month you can cope up. There is a chance to cope up. And the next question, sir, what is the best method to prove questions in math? Yeah, see, uh, prove questions. Is it prove questions? Uh, yeah, answer questions, I think. So best okay. method is first, uh, you have to know all the concepts in max, as I said earlier. But if you don't know concepts, what happens is even if you have solved 100 problems, also 101 problem will be there where the student may not be able to solve. This happens regularly with my students when we are dealing with. So suddenly if we tell uh, this concept you have to apply, you was, I forgot he will tell. So concepts must be first to digest it. That's what the building process. See, building process is nothing but foundation. Right from the foundation level, if the student knows all the concepts, the approach to the problem, give him more number of problems. Give him more number of problems. Let us suppose in one problem, he identified a new concept. Please write it somewhere. Have a book, write this concept I did not understand. And after every examination, the analysis of the question paper must be done by the student. How I did this problem? I, I, I was late at solving this problem or my approach is wrong. What is the solution to this problem? So like that, he must have a discussion of the paper which he has done in school. Every paper, question paper, after answering, after getting marks or before the marks, where I did mistake, why I, why I got less marks, the approach must be there. Analysis of the question paper must be done by the student with the help of the parent or by the teacher. If it is there, then what happens is we will identify the mistakes, whether it is a conceptual mistake or a silly mistake done by the student. Observe those and then rectify it. Next exam, we will perform well. Analysis of the paper must be there. Yeah, sure. And the final question, how much math should I do every day? <laughs> it all depends upon you. Uh, about, uh, see, some students, uh, half an hour or one hour, if they solve max, they are very good at it. Some may be slow, learners, slow learners, we don't know. For slow learners, uh, they have to put a lot of effort in the beginning. But as the days progress, I think they can perform very well. It all depends upon student to student. One student is solving fast, one student is not uh, solving fast. There's nowhere a comparison. Never compare student to student. Because uh, a student, if he understands completely, then he will be in the top in his future. So don't think that he must be intelligent. No one is born intelligent in this world. That's what I believe. So intelligence is nothing but on practice only it will come. On hard work it will come. So hard work is important. So how your uh, student is, how, how, your, uh, uh, how the student is accordingly, you must have a plan. Let us suppose he has to improvise many things. So he needs a lot of practice. So then the time for max must be extended. If he's a slow learner, extend the time. So really, if he needs help, you have to help them. So that long hours, if you sit with him, I think uh, that can be rectified. So it all depends upon student to student. Never have a comparison. Uh, compare, you're not comparing, but I'm just telling it, uh, people uh, compare that if, if he sits for half an hour, he can do complete max. But one student is there, if he sits only for two hours, he can do it. No problem. In the beginning, it will be a problem, but as soon as he moves on, I think he can do wonderful. Yeah, any other things you can ask? No, sir. That's it for now. Uh, we didn't get any questions from parents or in. Uh, thank you, sir, for the detailed overview about the topic and answering all the questions with patience. Yeah, thank you. And so we'll thank be you all. Yeah. Ending the session now, sir. And also we'll be having the session in the coming week as well. We yeah. hope to see you all again. If you have any queries, please write us at k at the .com. And for more info, visit our website, www.jurito.com. For better learning and better results, please join Jurito. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Probably another question. Okay. okay. Thank you. It is right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time.